ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवत फर्स्ट कैंटो फर्स्ट चैप्टर टेक्स्ट नंबर थ्री निगम कल्पतरोर्गलित फल शुक मुखादमृत द्रव संयुत पिबत भागवत रसमल मुहुरहो रसिका भुवि भावुका ट्रांसलेशन ओ एक्सपर्ट एंड थॉटफुल मेन रेली श्रीमद भागवतम द मेच्योर फ्रूट ऑफ द डिजायर ट्री ऑफ वेदिक लिटरेचर्स इट इमेनेटेड फ्रॉम द लिप्स ऑफ श्री सुखदेव गोस्वामी देर फोर दिस फ्रूट हैज बिकम इवन मोर टेस्टफुल ऑल दो इट्स नेक्टेरियन जूस वॉज ऑलरेडी रेलिशेबल फॉर ऑल इंक्लूडिंग लिबरेटेड सोल्स so very long purport we'll directly proceed with shila prabhupad's class bande ham shri guru the following is a class on the shrimad bhagavatam first canto first chapter text number 3 given by his divine grace ac Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada recorded on the 24th of February 1975 in Caracas Venezuela Sri Rupam Chakrajatam Nigama kalpataro galitam phalam Sukhamukha amrita dharma sangyutam पीबत भागवत रसम मुहुरहो रसिका भुवि भावुक लास्ट नाइन वी डिस्कस दिवस धर्म प्रोधित कैदव द्रिमद भागवत दीटिंग टाइप ऑफ रिलीज सिस्टम He is rejected. We have already explained, dharma does not mean a kind of faith, blind faith. Dharma means the real characteristic. For example, just like water is liquid, this is the characteristic of water. That is dharma. Stone is solid. That is the characteristic of stone. That is dharma. So, uh, faith is different thing. Faith, I have got faith today in something. Tomorrow, I may have faith in some other thing. And actually, we see sometimes a person called a Hindu is changing his faith to Muslim or Christian or a Christian is. changing his faith to another way so faith can be changed but the characteristics cannot be changed just like water is liquid uh, the liquidity cannot be changed of water so in sanskrit language or in vedic uh, literature dharma means the characteristics which cannot be changed now let us consider what is the characteristic of the living being the characteristic is that every one of us is serving somebody superior nobody we are sitting in this hall can say that i am not serving anyone if somebody is not serving anyone then he must be serving his own senses the whole material world is going on because the people are engaged in the service of the senses for sense gratification one is doing very very risky job so nobody can say that i am not serving that is the characteristic of the living being and that is called dharma sri chaitanya mahaprabhu said that jiver swarup hoy nitya krishna das means we living entity 
our real characteristic is to serve God. But we have given up the service of God, therefore we are now uh, engaged in the service of the senses. And because we are constitutionally servant, therefore either we shall serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead or the Absolute Truth, or if we do not like to serve the Absolute Truth, then we must serve our senses. Therefore it is described, dharma prajita koita vatra means cheating type of uh, religion. Uh, he is completely rejected here in the Srimad Bhagavata. Here this material world means everyone is trying to be master, but actually he is servant. Just like take, for example, in a family, the family head is the actually he is servant of his wife, of his children, or of his even servants. He is servant, but he is thinking that I am the master of this family. In your country especially, if the husband cannot satisfy the wife, immediately there is divorce. So although in the name one is husband of the wife, but actually he is servant of the wife. The head of the family, just to keep the family members satisfied, he must be ready to serve all of them. If he dissatisfied any one of the family members, even to the servant, the whole family is disturbed. Therefore, constitutionally, we are all servants, but we are serving uh, misguidedly the senses. Why I serve my wife? Because she gives me facility of sense gratification. Actually, I do not serve even my wife, but I serve my own senses. In this way, if you make an analytical study of everyone, we find that everyone is engaged to serve his senses. Therefore, my original characteristic is to serve, but I am misplacing my service to somewhere else. So, uh, uh, therefore it is said in this verse, dharma prochita koitava ortava. Koitava means cheating. Uh, so, uh, everyone is serving his senses, but he is thinking that he is master, that he is koitava, means chiti, or maya. The conclusion is that as we are constitutionally servant, we must remain a servant, not try falsely to become master. But by experience we see that by giving service to so many things, Nobody is satisfied, neither I am satisfied. For example, again, let us go to the family life. A man has served the family with heart and soul throughout the whole life. And when he is old man, if he asks permission from his wife, uh, my dear wife, now I have served so much, let me take some nest now. The wife will never give permission. She will say, what you have done? I have got to do so many things. Your this son is not yet settled up. This daughter is not yet married. How you can take care of So you cannot be. So actually, he is a servant of the wife, but he is thinking and master of the wife. This is called Maya. And any religious system on the platform of this false understanding is also cheating. Therefore, it is said, dharma prochita koita vata. Koita means cheating which is not dharma. No, it is not the characteristic. The characteristic is that I am eternally servant of God. So instead of serving God, if I serve the dog, that is called cheating religion. Nobody is meant for serving a dog, but because I am servant, if I am got sufficient engagement as servant of God, then I keep a dog to serve. So the conclusion is that constitutionally I am servant, servant of God, but instead of giving service to God, I am now engaged in the service of the dog. So on the standard of this uh, so-called service, uh, yeah, the Bhagavad-dharma is not discussed. Means the false service. 
Now, how it is? Uh, at, I mean, this is concluded. Therefore, the next verse says, "Nigama kalpataro galitam phalo." This real service is enunciated here as the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Nigama means the Vedas, and it is called kalpaturu. Kalpaturu means desire tree. Vedic knowledge is so perfect that you can uh, receive from the Vedas all different types of knowledge. You can receive knowledge from the Vedas. All types of knowledge means the uh, social, social, political, and scientific, and uh, there are so many departments of knowledge, even engineering, medical science. The medical science is called Ayurveda. Ayurveda means the Vedic knowledge about the duration of life. Similarly, there is, uh, uh, I mean, Dhanurveda, Dhanurveda, military science. There are so many departments, just like this aeroplane, uh, that is also mentioned in the Vedas. Uh, not only totally aeroplane, there are three other sciences. It is called Kapodavahi. Uh, Kapodavahi uh, means the core means the sky, and both means ship. As there is uh, science, how to manufacture the air ship, there is there. There is another science of the same type. It is called kapodva. Kapod means pigeons. You can train up pigeons, and they will carry you from one place to another. There is another science which is called uh, akash patol. Akash patrol means in the akash, in the sky, you can fly with any uh, vehicle. There are mantras. Suppose I am sitting at this throne. By chanting those mantras, this seat will be flying in the sky. We read from Srimad Bhagavata that Kapilya, uh, no, Kardamani, father of Kapilya, he Men and aeroplane or a, exactly a township with big, big buildings, with a lake, garden, and so many people that was flying in the sky and visited all the planets. Therefore it is said, Nigama Kalpaturu. Kalpaturu means desire tree. So Vedas are compared with the desire tree. Desire tree means just like here in this material world. You go to the mango tree, you get mangoes, but you cannot get samosa. But desire tree, there are in, in the spiritual planet, there are desire trees. Whatever you want, you can get from the tree. You, you go to any tree, and whatever you like, you get it from it. So that is called Kalpaturu. So the Vedas are compared with the Kalpaturu because you can derive any kind of knowledge from Vedic literature. So, Veda means knowledge. The word Veda means knowledge. So, Vedic literature means you can take it, any kind of knowledge, it can be called Vedas. Binti Veda Vidak Gyane, Binti Veda Vicharane. So, in Sanskrit Gama, the Vidhatu, from Vidhatu means knowing. And from Vidhatu, the word Veda has come. Now, the author says that this Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of Vedic knowledge. The Vedic knowledge is compared with the tree, and the tree has got fruit. So, this Bhagavatam is the fruit of the Vedic tree. That means you keep a tree for some getting fruit. If there is no fruit, that is meant for fear, it is useless. So here it is said, Nigama Kalpataru Galitam Phalam means the Vedic literature is just like the desert tree, and the Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit. And Galitam Phalam means a fruit ripened in the tree. It is very, very delicious. Generally, for business purpose, fruits are, unlike fruits are taken from the tree and it is artificially kept to ripe. 
That fruit means uh, the unripe fruit taken from the tree and it is wrapped artificially, that is not so tasty. And if the fruit is wrapped in the tree fully, then you taste it, it is very delicious. Another thing is that if any fruit in the tree, when it is rotten, it is tasted by the parrot, touched by the beak of the parrot, it becomes more delicious. So here it is said that this Simadha Bhagavatam is not only the ripening fruit of the Vedic tree, but it is tasted by Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami is the realized person. He is liberated, realized person. Therefore, to hear Bhagavatam from him is immediately delicious and effective. Sukamukhaz Amritam Dravatam. It is because it is explained by Sukadeva Goswami. Not a professional third class man, but Sukadeva Goswami. It is the injunction of Sanatana Goswami that one should hear Vedic literature. Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, from the realized person. Sri Sanatana Goswami says, Avaishnava Mukhat Girna Puta Bhri Katha Amritam Sarvanam Nakartabham means if Bhri Katha Amritam means the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, this is Bhri Katha Amritam, the nectar in it about the uh, activities of the Supreme Personality of God. That was called Prikatha. So one should not hear Prikatha Amritam from a non-realized uh, Avaishnava. Vaishnava means Vishnu Asadhyota, one who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. And Vishnu is expansion of Krishna. It is said in the Vedic literature. Rama di Muttis Kala Yamina Dishtan Nana Avatar Makarat Bhavani Sukintu Krishna Sayam Samavava Parama Paman Yu Govinda Madhi Pujam Kamamya means that Lord Krishna has plenary expansion in many, many forms, beginning with Rama, Lord Ramchandra, and Parashuram and Balaram, uh, there are three Rams, and Matsa Avatar, Kunma Avatar, Bhavana Avatar, uh, Kaviti Avatar, many. Uh, some of them are mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Uh, so the original person is Krishna. Krishna Sam Samavavat Paramapuma. The idea of praising Sukadev Goswami means he is not a professional Bhagavad Gita. He is realized so. Therefore, hearing of Bhagavad from Sukadeva Goswami is a comment. Or the representative of Sukadeva Goswami. Representative means one of which is deeply following the principle adopted by Sukadeva Goswami. That's why uh, Sukadeva Goswami first of all spoke Srimad Bhagavatam before Maharaj Pariki. And and in that meeting, Sutta Goswami was present. So here uh, you, you will find in the Sivad Bhagavatam, uh, Sutta Ubhaja means Sutta Goswami, after hearing from Sukadeva Goswami, he, he repeated the same Bhagavat recitation in the Naimisharana. In the, there was a big meeting uh, about 2500 years ago or more than that. At Naimisharana. That Naimisharana is still there in India. It is now changed by the name Nimsha. It is situated about 100 miles off from Lucknow. So still there are many hermitages in Naimisharana. People go there to visit as it is a place of pilgrimage. So uh, this Bhagavatam was discussed in there at Naimisharana. So here it is recommended that Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedic literature and it was first spoken by Sukadeva Goswami. The Vedic literature is full of knowledge that I have described. 
and the essence of Vedic literature is Srimad Bhagavatam. Among the learned circles in India, it is said, Vidya Bhagavatavadhi means your education should be up to Srimad Bhagavatam. Then you will have complete education. Then we shall understand what is our constitutional position and what is our real characteristic. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, the word mukti or liberation is stated. He, Srimad Bhagavatam defines mukti as this. Mukti hitya anatharupam sarupena avasthiti. Means mukti means giving up, giving up our unreal engagement and to be situated in the real original characteristic engagement. For our original uh, uh, in characteristic that we are eternal servant of God, Krishna. If we are situated in the that platform, or the eternal platform, serving Krishna, that means mukti means uh, give up the false conception of life and take the real conception of life. That is mukti. So Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita gives mukti in this word. Sarva dharma anparitajya mami kam saranam vajya. Sarva dharma means all kinds of this bogus religious system. You, sarva dharma anparitajya, why otherwise, why is advising paritajya? Give it up. Because it is bogus. It is cheating. The real dharma is mami kam saranam vajya. Only surrender to me. Mami comes in. This is the Krishna in the beginning, in the fourth chapter, he said, Yada yada hi dharma sabglani bhavati bharata. Abhuddhanam dharma sabglani sijam aham. Paritranayam sadhunam vinasaya chadishkita. Dharma samasthavana thaya. Sammabhāmi, these are the statements, means whenever there is mismanagement of the word dharma or pure characteristic, at that time I appear. So Krishna appeared for re-establishing the real principles of dharma or religion. So he did not come or did not appear for establishing the so-called religion system, Hindu religion, or Muslim religion, or Christian religion, or this religion, that. Not that time. Real religion. Uh, therefore he says, Sarva dharma give up all this. Uh, simply surrender unto me. So any religious system which is teaching to divert the attention of the follower to so many things, that is cheating religion. Just like in India, there is a class of men they are called Mayavadis. They recommend that you worship any daily god. The result is the same. This is false religion. Krishna says that Mam Egam Saranamir, only surrender unto me. Then one may ask then the Vedas, there are so many demigods worship is recommended. Is that false? That is not false, because it is mentioned in the Vedas. You cannot say it is false. But uh, they are meant for all material benefit. Material benefit means it is mentioned that if you want to be very educated, you worship this demigod. Uh, if you want a beautiful wife, then you worship this demigod. If you want to be very wealthy, then you worship this demigod. In this way, there are different items, but all these things are all material things. So that, that is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Kaam khantam karmanana siddhi jajante yodhivota. Those who are desirous of getting success in this material life, they, for them the different uh, demigod worship is recommended. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita it is said also, kāmaṣ tasta ito jyāna jajanti annadevata means that those who are engaged in worshipping other demigods, their sense is lost by lusty deserts. Suppose if I want wealth, 
all beautiful wife or very good position or good education. What are these? These are all temporary things. As so long this body is there. But one should be interested uh, for eternal things because every one of us is eternal. Uh, so if we want a beautiful wife or wealth, that is simply for this body only. In next body, our uh, desires should be different. Suppose next body, I get an animal body. Then uh, we require a wife in a different type. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, it is said, the material desires person, they get some benefit for this short duration of life, but that will be ended, that will not continue. With the end of the body, everything will be finished. Therefore, uh, this desire that let me have wealth, let me have nice wife, let me have nice uh, material education, and so on and so on, these are not permanent, it is temporary. Antavat, So, uh, a real person, a learned person who is interested in eternal life, they are not interested in all these temporary things. Even if you go to the heavenly planet, because these things are promised in the Vedic literature, that is also temporary. So, Mukti means to give up all these material desires and be situated in your original constitutional position, Krishna consciousness. That is liberation. Liberation does not mean that when you get liberation, you have got now two hands, you will have four hands like that. No. Liberation means change of consciousness. Now you are conscious of material enjoyment. Give me nice wife, give me nice wealth, give me nice education, give me this, give me this. Oh, man, there is no end. So, therefore, Bhagavad says, Hitya, Anatha, Rupam, these are all men, the necessities of the body. Sarupena, Avasthiti, you be situated in your original consciousness, namely Krishna consciousness. That is no liberation. Therefore, the definition of bhakti means, Anna Vilashita Sannam, no other material desires. No desires, material desires. Desire means now we desire now material desires. This is Bhakti Marga. Man, simply to satisfy Krishna. That is Bhakti Marga. No other desire, no other motive. That is recommended by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, Nadhanang na janang na sundarin kavitang na jagadi sakamai. Mamo janmani janmani sari bhavata bhakti rahit ki tai. This is the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are following uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, therefore, his instruction should be followed. What is this? No, no, no. I don't want any wealth, material. No, 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 no. I don't want any so called followers. No, 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 then what do you want? These are the material things everyone wants. Now, mama janamani janamani sari, bhakti Even I don't want liberation. Liberation means there is no more janma. But he said janamani janamani. Like what I want to be engaged in your devotion and sari. This is real characteristic and that should be called. So this is the essence of Vedic knowledge. The essence of Vedic knowledge is Vedanta. Vedanta. There are four Vedas and many branches, 18 Puranas and then 108 Upanishads, all combined together. Uh, the essence is taken as the Simad Bhagavad. First of all, Vasudev. Vasudev is the author of all these literature. Not author. He has written. Formally, there was no need of writing because people are very intelligent. As soon as one hears from the spiritual master, he remembers. That was the position five thousand years ago. Not now. Now the memory is not sad. Therefore he left all this Vedic literature, Vedic tradition into writing. So Vedanta Sutra uh, is the cream of all Vedic literature and Srimad Bhagavatam is the further explanation of this Vedanta Sutra. 
So, uh, because uh, Vyasadev knew that later on this Vedanta Sutra will be misinterpreted by so many rascals. Therefore, he left uh, the comment on the Vedanta Sutra in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, if we uh, hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukhdev Goswami and his disciples succession, that we shall enjoy life even after liberation. Rasam Alayam. Alayam, Alayam means liberation, means this material life completely placed, spiritual life. Then the spiritual life also you will enjoy Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. But for whom it is man? That is said here, Mohuraha Rasika Bhubi Bhabuka. Those who are very thoughtful and rasik, humorous, and transcendentally humorous, they can understand Srimad Bhagavatam and enjoy it. Yes, all right. Now any question? What is the position of a person who takes the devotional service with the idea of liberation? Hmm? That is not pure bhakti. You can take devotional service with any idea that will be fulfilled. But anyone who wants liberation by devotional service, he is not a pure devotee. That is called jnana misravan. Means bhakti adulterated with jnana. Real bhakti, I have explained, means no other desire than to serve Krishna. That is pure work. Jnana karma means the karmis, they want promotion in the heavenly planets, and the jnanis, they want to become one with the supreme or liberation. So it should be uncovered by the result of jnana and karma and fully devoid of any other desire. That is, so those who are bhaktas and desiring uh, after liberation, uh, they are not pure. Because why a devotee shall aspire after liberation? As soon as a bhakta is already liberated, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, mancha-bhavicharini bhakti yogena jase urte sagunan samatitvai tan brahma bhuya adarvati. He, anyone, he is engaged in pure devotional service. Uh, he is transcendental to all these three qualities of the material world, and he is situated in the Brahma platform. Liberation means to be situated on the Brahma platform. So for a bhakta, the liberation is already there. Srila Billa Mangal Thakur has said, Mukti Mugulita Anjali Sevati Asma. We are devotees, so Mukti, liberation, He's standing on my door with folded hands. What can I do for you? So why a pure bhakta should desire after liberation? For a pure bhakta, the liberation is standing on the door as medicine. So a devotee is not as far as of liberation. Is it possible to achieve liberation of other religions? There is no other religion except Krishna consciousness. All cheating religion. That is the way it discussed. Dharma, pro, jita, koito, all cheating type of religion is rejected. Kicked out. In other words, until you have arrived here, there was no possibility of liberation for humanity. That you can judge. If I say it will be self-advertisement, but you can, you are intelligent, you can judge. But I have not brought something invented by me. I have brought the Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. That's all. That's all. In other words, people, uh, until now, people do not have a chance to liberate themselves. No. No, I not liberate a child. But the thing is, they are not trained up. Just like, take for example the Christians. They call themselves Christian, they violate all the principles of Christian. It's like in the Christian principle is, thou shalt not kill. And they are very expert in killing. So where is Christian religion? When who is Christian? How can the people in general recognize when a devotee is pure? Hmm? That is, I have already described. He has no material desire except to serve Krishna or God. That is, that is pure devotion. Sure, that's all right. Chant Hare Vishnu.